Good evening, barflies and lounge lizards, and welcome to the Wacky World Lounge. And tonight we'll be discussing my favorite space opera films. Now, there will be no Star Wars or Star Trek on this list, because a big part of why I do what I do, and many of you have heard me say this, is I like to turn people on to stuff they've never seen before. That's actually the biggest reason why I do this. And I figure if you haven't seen Star Wars or Star Trek, probably not watching this video to begin with. And number five on the list is The Ice Pirates from 1984. Directed by Stuart Raffle, who also co-wrote Kroll, and then wrote and directed one of the most beloved sci-fi films of all time, Mac and Me, The Ice Pirates is a space opera comedy about a future where water is so valuable that ice cubes have become a form of currency, and the titular ice pirates get caught stealing ice and end up in the service of a princess who is searching for her father, who has disappeared, and as they say, hijinks ensue. This is a great little movie and a really unique take on space opera. It features a fantastic cast with Robert Urich of Magnum Force and Killdozer fame, Mary Crosby, aunt to Natasha Yar, and a fellow by the name of Ron Perlman of Beauty and the Beast fame. And of course, it has Ron Taylor as Pimpbot. Originally titled The Water Planet, Ice Pirates started out a bit more serious with almost double the budget, but that was slashed to about nine million and Raffle was brought in who made the film more comedic. Now this one actually has another good sci-fi connection. Several of the vehicles from Logan's Run appear in the film, one of which was driven by Pimpbot. Now I'm not saying that Pimpbot is better than C-3PO, but I'm not not saying that either. And number four on the list is Battle Beyond the Stars from 1980. Produced by Roger Corman and directed by Jimmy Murakami, a well-known animator who worked on the animated film Heavy Metal, Battle Beyond the Stars tells the story of a small farming planet that is being threatened by a warlord played by John Saxon. So John Boy Walton escapes the planet in an attempt to put together a group of mercenaries from across the galaxy. This one is very often and very unfairly compared to Star Wars, but the two have very little in common. If anything, Battle Beyond the Stars is a sci-fi take on the Seven Samurai. Matter of fact, the farming planet is called Akira, and its people, the Akira, after Akira Kurosawa. This is a great example of sci-fi and just a really good film. It features a great cast as well, which includes Robert Vaughn, George Pappard, Sybil Danning, and the aforementioned John Saxon. With a budget of $2 million, this was Roger Corman's most expensive production to date. Though supposedly, the bulk of that went to Pappard and Vaughn's salaries. There were some interesting people behind the scenes on this one as well. James Cameron built models, worked on special effects, and did some production design. And then Bill Paxton was the on-set carpenter. Footage from this film would end up being recycled for many different movies, including Space Raiders, Star Quest II, Vampirella, Fantastic Four, Dead Space, and Forbidden World. This is a must-see if you like more quirky sci-fi and are into the Seven Samurai story. And number three on the list is Galaxina from 1980. Directed by William Sachs, Galaxina is a sci-fi comedy film that tells the story of the crew of the space police cruiser Infinity as a journey to find a mystic gem known as the Blue Star. And among the crew is the android Galaxina, played by the former playmate Dorothy Strayton. And not only is this one a fun space opera, but it also has Western elements. There's a Wild West style saloon scene that is a particular standout, and it easily rivals Star Wars in terms of unique and interesting alien designs, one of which is a Mr. Spock parody. And if you need anything else to sell you on this one, Rhonda Shear makes an appearance as well. I could just stop the injury there, but I guess I'll go on. In the previously mentioned Western scenes, the Batmobile from Batman 66 can actually be seen in the background. And speaking of, sorta, the film scene within the film was the first spaceship on Venus from 1960. Reason being, Crown International owned the distribution rights for both films. This one, in my nearly humble opinion, is the most underrated space opera film of all time. Also one of the most underrated sci-fi comedies of all time. And if you dig space opera westerns, then this is the film for you. And on that, we should take a break. Sure. 
doing? An Imperial Probot is searching for the Rebel base. It's Kenner's turret and Probot playset. You have to put it together. Let's check it out, Chewbacca. <laughs> Keep me covered with a laser cannon. Action figures each sold separately. You can move Han Solo with the action lever and knock out the Probot. We got him, Chewie! Yay! But now they know where we are. Turret and Probot playset from Kenner's Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back collection. Action figures each sold separately. Only from the producers of Dungeons & Dragons games. From the very center of the great spiral galaxy to the only planet offering Star Frontiers game. Driven by a force unstoppable. Not knowing why, but programmed to purchase. Star Frontiers game. Star Frontiers role-playing games products of your imagination. And we're back with number two on the list, and that's Flash Gordon from 1980. Directed by Mike Hodges, who also directed the original Get Carter, Flash Gordon is the big screen adaption of the Alex Raymond comic strip of the same name. And it tells the story of Flash Gordon, an athlete turned space hero who has to battle the sharply dressed Ming the Merciless. And talk about a cast. It stars Sam Jones, who probably should be best known for the highly underrated 80s film, My Chauffeur. It has Max von Sydow, Timothy Bond Dalton, and most importantly, Ornella Muti as the space princess, because every good space opera needs a space princess. All being a fun movie aside, this is one of the best looking films ever made. It's like a comic book come to life with those weird red skies. It really feels like an alien world. And sure, it may not technically achieve as much as Star Wars, but it's a far better looking film, in my opinion. Except for those lizard men. Not really sure how they slipped through. But this began with producer Dino De Laurentiis, who developed an interest in making the film after working on Barbarella. He initially wanted Fellini to make the film, and at one point an obscure filmmaker by the name of George Lucas attempted the rights. But when he couldn't, he went on to make that Star Wars thing I was talking about. And speaking of said trilogy, it's pretty commonly known that Kurt Russell read for Han Solo. Less widely known is that De Laurentiis originally wanted Kurt Russell to play Flash, but Kurt turned it down, feeling the character lacked personality. And before we get to number one, let's have an honorable mention, and that would be Barbarella, which actually would probably be my favorite space opera film, but since I've covered it in depth already, don't want to do it again. So you can just go watch that one somewhere, somehow, some way. And number one on the list, you knew it was coming. Anyone who's watched this channel for more than 10 minutes knew this was coming. And I've already talked about it in depth, but I'm going to talk about it again. And that's Star Crash from 1978. Written and directed by Luigi Cozy, who also wrote and directed the Lou Ferrigno Hercules films, Star Crash is a space opera fantasy film about a space smuggler, played by Caroline Monroe, who ends up on a mission to destroy the superweapon of Space Joe Spinell. This is another that is unfairly compared to Star Wars, but the design work and the script predate that film, and Cozy himself actually calls it a science fantasy as opposed to science fiction. His major influence was the Harryhausen Sinbad pictures, and originally he wanted Star Crash to be Sinbad Goes to Space or Sinbad on Mars, uh, depending on the source, which also explains the casting of Caroline Monroe, which is apparently Cozy's first and only choice for the role of Stella Star. And speaking of the amazing cast, aside from those mentioned already, it also features a young David Hasselhoff and Christopher Plummer, who admitted to doing the film for no reason other than wanting a trip to Rome. But the real standout, other than Monroe, is Judd Hamilton, who played the Southern Gentleman Robot L. Hamilton would go on to executive produce the 1980 film Maniac, which also starred Caroline Monroe and Earth Joe Spinell. Now this is a great little film with great practical effects, including some stop motion, and there's even a rumor to have been a dinosaur scene that was cut from the final film. And that's all the time we have for this week. Please like, comment, subscribe, and keep it wacky.